Oh hey, it's Wes. And today we are taking a look at the cutest little tripod. Let me make it cuter. This little guy right here, it is the Sire Traveler 5C. We're gonna get in deep, we're gonna get some numbers and see exactly how this stacks up, starting with, as always, the build quality. Can you hear this jingling through the entire video? <laughs> because this is the smallest, lightest tripod that they could make, we're gonna have to have some compromises here. You can tell right from the get-go that although this is sturdy, it is not going to be the strongest tripod in the world. Our locks here though are nice solid aluminum, as are the leg locks down here. No O-rings like one of Ciray's other tripods. Uh, this one here, the ST124. Ooh, we got some bend here. We'll talk more about bend later. If we open this up and take it apart, we can see inside the legs that, yep, our mechanism is largely metal with some uh, plastic for uh, squeezing, which is the usual thing. And on the back of each carbon fiber shaft, we do have the usual plastic or Teflon nub that uh, keeps the leg from coming back out or from rotating. For me, that's the most common failure point. I'd like to see something a little sturdier put in there. And when you release the leg and fold it up all the way, you can see right here, there is a space that anything can get inside the leg mechanism. You don't wanna get rocks and stuff inside here, but uh, it's probably gonna happen at some point, especially if you're like hiking with this. So overall, I would say it's about as sturdy as it could be for this size and weight class, but compared to its larger counterparts, it's obviously, uh, not the most rugged tripod. So I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10 for build quality. Feature set. This one can go flat, but it's a bit of a process to get it there. Ugh. The center column doesn't slide through for the sake of saving space, but it does come off with a little bit of work. There. And then I can take the top off there and then we take the top and put it back into the center column screw that down so once you've done that you can get down to 6.3 inches i don't count inverse tripod stuff because that is a pain in the butt to do and then when you make it as tall as possible this will get up to 54.3 inches so not quite head height but it's up there but it gets up there by using this massive center column two-stage center column this is all carbon fiber and aluminum for the most part. We have a max four kilogram load. And the tripod itself weighs 850 grams, which is incredibly light. So here's our max height. A little bit below eye level on that. The feet don't appear to be removable. Uh, they're just rubber nubbins. They don't have retractable spikes or anything. On the top here, although it looks incredibly tiny, this is actually an Arca Swiss plate, which this much more expensive counterpart does not have. So you can slide in any old Arca Swiss into there and that makes me very happy. We don't have a dedicated pan. There is a single knob here to tighten things down and that controls the pan and the tilt all at once which again, we're saving space. And there is a convenient little metal carabiner dangling from the bottom that we are constantly hearing. It rotates easily, but feels pretty sturdy. So obviously we couldn't have every feature under the sun because it just wouldn't fit in this tripod. We have a bubble level, but it's all the way down here on the legs, not up at the top. So that's sort of useful for some things. So overall for feature set, I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. Stability, and this is where we're obviously going to take a hit. Look how skinny these legs are. Ooh. We measured all of our tripods using a force meter to find out exactly how much force these take both to bend the legs and to twist the entire tripod in place. And then we will normalize those numbers versus the length of the tripod so that we can get some objective numbers. So first of all, the twisting resistance is eight Newton meters for the whole tripod. And then the bend resistance is 
14 Newton meters. Now, if we compare this to everything else in our scales and our tests, it does not fare fantastically well. <laughs> that was to be expected. It is an ultra small and light tripod. It is smaller and lighter than this, the Ulanzi Zero, which is a very small and light tripod. And its legs get pretty skinny down at the bottom. Let's compare the skinniness of our bottom segments here. Yeah, if we look closer, the bottom segment on the Ulanzi is still a fair amount thicker. So that is why we have a lot more bend resistance, even though this one doesn't fare fantastically well either. If we're talking about compact, when you put this thing in your bag, it is noticeably smaller and lighter. It's not actually a lot narrower though. The uh, Ulanzi has a great design that it kind of fits more into the profile of a water bottle. Let's compare. So this is actually skinnier, but it is noticeably heavier. For stability, obviously, we had to shave some stuff off here, rather, C-Ray did. We're gonna give this a four out of 10. It's at the bottom of our charts. Usability, obviously the biggest win for usability here is just how small and light it is. Much better for like a hiking friend if you're gonna be going for a while and you're gonna be carrying this weight around with you. Big win for usability, built-in Arca Swiss. Thank you. Leg locks are smooth and fast. We don't have leg spikes and we don't have these single action leg releases, which we would never expect to see on a tripod this small, but it is something that some tripods have and we're comparing everything together here. When you're adjusting the angle of your camera, we still just have that one knob, which can be kind of inconvenient for fine tuning because everything releases as soon as you loosen that knob. So overall for usability, it's an 8.5 out of 10. For the most part, this is a pleasure to use. Value, this comes in at $138. There's not a lot to really directly compare this to. Manfrotto has a very similar tripod, but not the same. It is the Element Small Carbon Fiber, $240. And they also have an aluminum version for $145. So for $7 less than the Manfrotto aluminum comparable tripod, you get this crazy lightweight carbon fiber tripod. And then you have something like this, the Ulanzi Zero, which costs way less than its rival, the Peak Design Carbon Fiber, this still costs more than twice as much as this. So this is an easy 10 out of 10 for value. No problem there. If we add up all of our scores, that gets us to 73%. Not an amazing score, but obviously there are a lot of compromises that had to be made to get this tripod to be as small and light and compact as it is. So if you need the smallest and lightest tripod, you wanna pick one of these up, I've got links down in the description below to help support this channel and feed my fat cats. Actually, I don't even know if they're affiliate links. If you have any questions about the Traveler 5C, let me know down in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Until next time, let's get out there and take some photos.